Tourism is a commercial organization and operation that is synergized to highlight holidays, visits to places of interest. We all know that Nigeria has delightful places in different parts of our country, the south, the west, the east, and the north. But how do people, not from our country, and even those who are in our country, get to know about these places and enjoy themselves with them? And that's why we have the honor and the privilege to have a chat this morning with the Director General of the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, NTDC, and the person of Mr. Florence Okoka. Thank you very much, Sal. Hello, Suleiman. Thank you for taking the time. When we talk about uh, tourism in Nigeria, one might even start by asking, does Nigeria have tourism potential? <laughs> Definitely it does. Um, the Statistician General of the National Bureau of Statistics uh, released some figures last week where he said tourism and its associated industries or services is responsible for 34% of GDP and 20% of employment. Those figures in a $500 billion economy speak for themselves. You, 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 if you divide it down into transportation, hospitality, entertainment, uh, increasingly important uh, creative industry of music, film, fashion, food, religion, the economics of uh, uh, oil industry, the buying power of Nigeria in terms of economics of trade, the economies of scale that Nigeria offers to traders around Sub-Saharan Africa. <laughs> it's a question of definition. It's sometimes um, limiting for the country when you think about tourism as in lying down on a beach and that's where it is. But in Abuja here, there are digital entrepreneurs in the tourism space that have businesses that are based on social media, aggregating clients, and taking those clients to climb some of these mountains that you see around here. Uh, tourism is important. Tourism is a business. Tourism is a business that you can invest in and has incredible returns. Globally, it's the largest employment of or employer of labor, more than the oil industry, more than manufacturing. It is uh, uh, subscribed to about I think, 300 million people, strategically women and the youth. It's responsible for about $7 trillion in terms of global trade. Are we harnessing what we have? to the best of our potential and ability. Perhaps we can take it from that. Is there no. more? No. There, there, there's, there's a lot more. Um, first of all, there's the issue of the corporate governance and regulation. That is the legal framework that governs tourism in Nigeria as a business. The laws are 40 years old. The, the, the federal laws are 40 years old. So the first thing we have done is gone to support the 8th Senate and, and the 8th House to repeal and reenact a new law. That law has already passed through Senate, approved. It's now in the House of uh, Representatives. Had its second reading, awaiting concurrence before it goes to the president for assent. Now, let me put it in, 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 in context. You've had a 40-year-old car. All of a sudden, you get a brand new car with all the mods and cons of 2018. This law, I expect, will uh, create an enabling environment in which the effect will probably be approximating what GSM did to 090, if you, if you remember our analog systems. At the tail end of uh, last year, you actually granted an interview to one of the dailies where you said that there's something wrong in how we define tourism assets in Nigeria and how it can be used for business. Can you further enlighten us about that? Um, who owns a tourism? What is a tourism asset? Who owns it? How is it held? The uh, uh, national stadium and surrounding structures in Abuja 
is a tourism asset. Who owns it? How is it held? Is there a title to it? Can you use that title to raise funds to commercialize that asset that is sitting down pretty moribund? Are you, do you have a legal framework that allows you to do, to, to do joint ventures or create SPVs that can actually enhance that asset and bring better value to it? The Venodrome should be the home of music in, 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 in the capital of Nigeria. How, is, uh, how do you hold our tourism asset? Who owns it? Are they state governments, local governments, or private individuals? How can we better utilize what we have? Um, the focus of NTDC has, has been domestic tourism, and, and that is highlighting the potentials of what we have and trying to encourage people to use what we have to the best that we can. You see, we all talk about tourism and we talk about the international. The international will always remain a dream until you have a so solid domestic industry on which the international can come to rest. Look, you go to Dubai, you go to Jerusalem, you go to Saudi Arabia. All you're doing is connecting an international ticket to a very solid domestic industry. And that domestic industry doesn't necessarily have to be the huge international footprints of hotels. It's the cottage industry. It's the little places like this. It's the little gems, the little uh, uh, souvenir maker, the little restauranteur, the little film house, the little museum, the little cultural destination, traditions, and, 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 and so forth that we are, have such a richness. In. I mean, if you look at the amount of people in Nigeria, 200 million, 200 million diverse cultures. Add the colonial heritage, Add the resident populations of Indians and Lebanese, and most recently the Chinese. Now mix that up. The emerging culture is the unique thing that we call the arts that people want to move around to come and look at. If you, uh, uh, going back to a question you asked earlier on, um, one of the things that also needs to be attended to is the issue of hu uh, human capital. What training do individuals, both in the private sector and in the public sector, have towards the development of tourism? Not only the training, what access do they have to the current uh, best standards and technologies that allows them to harvest information and to disseminate information to people? And then you look at the flip side. It's not just about human capital, what my training is. It's also what is my return? What is my welfare package? Well, so who's supposed to work on that? Tourism, as you earlier said, depends on so many factors. Uh, uh, first of all, the image of the country. How easy is it to get a visa? What is your embassy experience? What is your airport experience? Is your hotel value for money when you arrive? Somebody can bill a hotel as a five star Hotel, you get in there, you find a cup and a bucket in the bathroom. That's a five star. That goes to grading, but we'll talk about that later. So, you know, I, I must say something here. This is a great country. If you've been around some of the African countries, we've got tremendous infrastructure here. We are at times a little unfair to our fatherland in that we compare our infrastructure. Uh, 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 current infrastructure to what you have seen in London or Dubai, etc. We're not London, we're not Dubai. And our particular trajectory of growth is going to be a different experience. It's going to be something that's modular, is homegrown by us, for us. Um, and also those people who want to come from outside our country they are, and enjoy... They're not coming to look at our infrastructure. They're coming to look... At, they're coming for the soul of the Nigerian. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are coming here. It's about the soul of the night. This exists in most places of the world. But when you come to Nigeria and you interact with the Nigerian that loves Nigeria, that likes being Nigerian, or maybe doesn't know as much of Nigeria as he should know, that is what attracts people here. 
And if you look at what I term the new mediums of cultural expression, our food, our film, our fashion, our well, the, the special brand, especially of the Pentecostal religions in, 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 in Nigeria, even our seasonal politics, this attracts people to Nigerians and eventually Nigeria. Yes, sir. When, when, when you came into office, uh, your main task was to rebrand uh, and uh, TDC, which of course you, you introduced uh, projects like Tour Nigeria. You had an acronym, Chief. Yes, that was what I was actually yeah, running for. Tell us about the success of this. Uh, okay. Chief, corporate governance and regulation, we're almost there with changing of a 40 year old law. Uh, human capital, we've been doing some digital training, which isn't the usual type of training. It's, it's, it's uh, training by uh, Google, Nigeria's affiliates. It's training by uh, uh, Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia Foundation. It's training by Jumia. Those people are bringing private sector knowledge and technologies to train, uh, 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 I won't call NTDC a, 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 a government bureaucracy. I will call it an emerging technology company <laughs> in the travel space. Um, that's part of the infrastructure that needs to be built. The uh, tourism satellite account, that's part of the infrastructure that needs to be built. But I must say something. Every road, every power plant, every transformer, every security apparatus that the government has invested in, for the life of a Nigerian is the same infrastructure that a tourist will enjoy. So all this expenditure for the life of every Nigerian to make it better also is an investment in specific tourism infrastructure. There are certain things we need a bit more in. Uh, uh, but I think over time, when people start to understand the returns of tourism, etc., they, they will start to invest in it. <laughs>
largest taxi service in the world is not fully Coca Incorporated. It's Uber. Does Uber own a car? Do they own drive? Do they employ drivers? Do they buy petrol? Do they buy insurance? The future of advertising and marketing of countries, of activities is digital. The speed at which you can let people know what's going on is phenomenal. And the numbers you can reach, you cannot print enough pamphlets to get to them. What we are trying to do is aggregate a wealth of knowledge that allows people, I don't know what you like, but query the digital space where everybody deposits what we have here. I mean, you've been in Abuja two years. You can see the acceleration in the every weekend. There are two or three things to do. Where do you learn about those things? Internet. It's on the internet. And you go there, you see, I want to do this. I don't want to do that. This is what suits me. So hashtag tour Nigeria. Everybody is placing that hashtag tour Nigeria, hashtag Nigerian flavors. Advertising what they're doing. I think the hashtag is about 12,000 strong. Now, that's a lot of individuals and a lot of images attached to that hashtag. And it's, 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 it's growing. Are you taking Nigerian flavor beyond Abuja? Has it gone around the country? No. Uh, digital... Uh, it is not necessary. Uh, it is very necessary. Advertising requires uh, uh, funding. <laughs> and funding has, has not been uh, as easy as... as it hasn't been adequate, uh, and, and you must understand where the country has been and where it's coming, uh, where it's trying to go to. We cannot uh, plant a seed in the morning and expect to eat the ripe fruit at <laughs> night. So we, we, we must, we must be patient. You need money to throw Nigeria in a way. Nigeria is your cheapest holiday. It won't cost me to tour 36 states of Nigeria. It won't cost me what it will cost me to tour 36 states of America. Well, someone told us something recently that there are lovely places she would like to visit with her family and her friends, but she has come to learn that some of these tourist destinations do not have hotels, do not have living space. That someone could actually travel to one place, you know, with family, bus full of people, and not have proper or adequate place uh, to live and enjoy those sites well. I totally agree with you. We have not invested what we should have invested. You don't want to drive from here to a waterfall and get there and see that the raging water you saw in the photograph is not there because they've been bleeding the headwaters for irrigation. You don't want to get there and it's you know, nightfall and you can't see the spectacle. You don't want to get there and you can't find a little place like this to sit down, have a bottle of water, have something to eat. You don't want to get there and you're leaving. You can't buy a t-shirt that says I was at Owu Falls or I attended the Kano Durba. Those are small investments that are employment and income generating for people. And that's where the strength of tourism comes in when it comes to employment. Those things have not been done. Now, apart from the destination that we are been gifted as a nation, this natural feature, You've got to aggregate. So you've got to find some other activities that you can encourage to come to that location that will have clean toilets that you and I can use comfortably. That will have GSM signal because we feel insecure when we cannot make a phone call that we're okay or take a selfie and post it. Whether we like it or not, that is the reality of today. Somebody would rather go to the mall than go to one of these our, 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 our features because we have not invested in them. Can NTDC invest in it? We can't because we don't own it. We don't have also the resources to give grants for individuals that own it to invest in it. But these are some of the things that the laws are going to, 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 to readjust. So by the time we have this bill, uh, you know, uh, this act in place, we're going to have uh, private sector, you know, coming into the tourism sector. It'll give us the legal framework for us to be able to discuss with private sector entities and the owners of assets to say, come, we want to you know, marry you off together on this enterprise that is profitable for both of you. Right now, we're unable to. Okay, now uh, back uh, early this year, around June, but there about Nigeria hosted the 61st uh, United Nations World Tourism Organization Commission for Africa, and it has its theme 
uh, tourism statistic a catalyst for development? Mm -hmm. How has statistic in Nigeria, because I know that this is one area that we have not really done well. We don't know how many people have visited Nigeria. We don't know how many, you know, tourist movement really. How can this be developed? For the first time, um, tourism statistics has actually now been isolated uh, by the National Bureau of Statistics. That is a quantum leap. And, you know, I, I thank the National Bureau of Statistics for this. For the first time, we have the origins of the UNWTO tourism satellite account. It's not a switch that you flick on. It's aggregating information from hotels, from immigration, from airlines, from banks, etc. The days of sitting down with pen and paper and interviewing people and counting is long gone. Most of this information is digitally available. We are sitting, well, all three of us are sitting here. MTN or whoever, the telcos know we're here. We're sitting down here because our phones are talking to certain cell sites. If we paid our bills here, the banks through POCs know that we're here. If we're foreigners and we came in through the country, immigration knows that we're here. If we bought a local ticket from Lagos to Abuja, the airlines know we're here. So most of this information just needs to be pulled together and you know, pulled through a, a, a sieve for tourism to know exactly what the statistics are. And the importance of the statistics is simply that we know what we're doing right, we know what we're doing wrong, and we are able to advise or adjust policy to take uh, into consideration what will benefit the nation. I am optimistic for tourism in Nigeria. I think many Nigerians are too. And um, I know you're focused on domestic tourism. And um, like you say, it's already making impact and bringing about um, lots of remuneration for the country and for citizens with association. But we know that when people come from outside of the country, they bring a lot up. They bring a lot for us that our people can also benefit from in terms of their purchasing power. In terms of seeing uh, cultures that many may be used to, they see it with fresh eyes. Yeah. Are we totally going to neglect international, uh, international fans? If you focus on them, won't we be doing better than we already are doing, like you've already said? You know, if, you're, if your house is clean, your food is sweet, and your disposal, uh, uh, your disposition, disposition sorry, is, is friendly, your house will always be full of friends. Let's get certain things right, certain fundamental things that the domestic tourism industry depends on. The international tourism, it's there. A lot of Nigerians in diaspora come in. A lot of Nigerians, oh, sorry, a lot of uh, foreigners seeking both business uh, or economic opportunities come here. Uh, if, if you look at Abuja today or Lagos today or Portaco today, how many non-Nigerians do you see? Why are they here? Whether we like it or not, they will be here for business, but they're not permanent residents. They're economic business tourists. Nigerians return home for short periods of time and return. Though we don't count them as the you know, idea, uh, perfect idea of a tourist, but they are here for a short time and they conform to the criteria with which we measure tourism. There's also religious tourism. How many people come here to pray? You will be shocked. Plain loads. I am a political tourist in Abuja. I'm not from Abuja, but I am. Well, it's been a pleasurable experience chatting with you. Uh, we understand that uh, the tourism sector, if fully developed, is going to be the Nigerians' good oil. We are certainly hoping to experience that in our lifetime. Yes, we have been chatting with, uh, with uh, Mr. Folon Shokoka, the Director General uh, Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation. Let's head back to the studio as we can get continuous. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Olufunke Akindele, a.k.a. Jennifer Sulia Ken, a.k.a. Lefty, I'm going to get a job.